Government wants to do good things for people, help the Indians, protect the forests and so forth. The planners always have such good intentions. But again and again, their plans make much of life worse. In the name of helping the poor, look at what the housing department's done. After spending billions on public housing, many families have been helped. But too often, public housing looks like this. It's bug infested, it's mice infested. At housing projects all around America, elevators don't work, repairs aren't made. This has been like this for, I would say, about two months now. At this St. Louis building, an alarm sounds 24 hours a day. With no security and no locks, they just leave the doors wide open. Now, every administration has said they'll do better. Both the current and last administration said they want to do more. Let's help you build a better life for you and your family. For years, Housing Secretary Andrew Cuomo has handed out giant checks and issued press releases saying Cuomo makes the American dream achievable. Cuomo awards $10 million. How arrogant. It's not Cuomo's money. It's your money. Let me give you a safe, clean, decent place to live. Did he? So often, public housing has locked poor people into crime-ridden ghettos with problems so intractable the government later just blows the buildings up. In St. Louis, Chicago, Baltimore, Newark, our government destroys the very things they once held out as the solution. Why do these projects fail? Some housing officials have said it's not the government's fault, the tenants are the problem. Many won't pay their rent. They vandalize their own buildings. But if the tenants are the real reason public housing's in such sorry shape, how do you explain what happens when you get the government out? This apartment complex is in the middle of one of the poorest sections of New York City. Unlike so much public housing, it's very clean and well-maintained. There are playgrounds filled with happy children. It didn't used to be like this. When this was a public housing project, living here was hell. There were some 4,000 broken windows. The elevators wouldn't work for months at a time. This place was a shambles. It looked bad, it felt bad, it even smelled bad. Residents say the government just let the project decay. When Brian Lewis took over as building manager... Half the place had no heat, half the place had no gas, ten broken sewer mains. The government put in new boilers, says Lewis, but hooked them up wrong. In five years, those brand new boilers were gone. That's an example of not caring, because it's not their money. Do we, are we doing it right? Well, who cares? We got the money, we're putting it in. I did my job, because my job was put in the boilers. And that's the way they were. And then there was the crime. We identified 132 apartments that were controlled by drug dealers. They had nicknames for this place, like New Crack City, Ambush Alley. It's what they called passageways like this because people were so scared they didn't walk through, they ran through. That was when it was a government project. Now a private developer runs it and is doing all kinds of odd things, like bringing in musicians to work with the kids, hey! yeah! giving karate lessons, building a new playground. For the first time in, I mean, a lot of years, they had children running around in that park, playing on uh, the climbing facilities, going down the slides. You had mothers there with baby carriages. I just looked at it and I said, you know, this is becoming a community again. Under private management, everything changed. Why? What's the difference? This is the business here. So how do you make your business a success? You find out what your customers need and you cater to them. Why? You give them the things they need to make them continue to be good customers. It's dollars and cents in his pocket. The man he's talking about is Harley Frank, who, when we visited this summer, was the owner's rep. Harley knows they'll make more money if the complex has a good reputation. That keeps him working on the buildings than negotiating with tenants. You want me to close the park? Harley had been considering the kids' request for new lights and bleachers by the basketball courts, but only if the pot smoking by some of the kids stopped. I need weed. When these kids resisted, it's not gonna stop. the tenants started policing themselves. They're not going to put on the lights if we don't stop smoking weed in the park. No lights going to be up in here. No bleachers going to be up in here. No water going to be up in here. No benches going to be up in here. That's for a nickel bag. Come on, man. We, they, we never had this. We got it now. We can't let this go. How would you like it if each, every one of those guys knows that we're closing the park because you're smoking? You, would you like that? 
No. I can't have it where we're walking down here and I'm smelling weed. It just can't be. And we work with you. We can't do nothing, I'm saying, but work with you. Why can't this passion come out under public housing? Because in public housing, there's no motivation for it. People are civil servants. They get paid at the end of the week, whether they do their work or not. Now, of course, there are civil servants who work hard. But overall, government's record at providing goods and services is not impressive. 